Howdy doody, my name is Susie, and today I thought I would share with you how to make these beautiful borax crystallized silk flowers. They turn out really amazing, and they are just encrusted in crystals. I don't know how much the camera will pick up the shine. They're definitely shinier in real life than they are on the camera. And all we're using is borax laundry detergent. Borax is also known as sodium borate. And we're using some boiling water. And then we need some vessels. And then you want to have some vessels to fill with our solution of dissolved borax in the boiling water. And you want to get maybe uh, a chopstick and some string because what we're going to do is suspend whatever we want crystallized in that solution. So it's really simple to make, but there are a couple of little tricks in terms of proportions, etc. And this particular brand of Borax that I bought, which is the uh, 20 Mule Team brand, they actually, uh, the original company in 1883 was mining this in Death Valley in California. And the reason that it got its name is because they were using 20 Mule Teams to mine the borax. So borax is a naturally occurring mineral which is mined and extracted from the earth. The ore is broken up in small pieces. It goes through a hot water boiling process, it goes through other processes and dries up the borax, turning it into a powder and packaging it for our laundry detergent. And borax is also known to be used as a pesticide, tanning hides. It's also been used to age wood, also as a wood preservative. And of course, we also use it in household cleaners. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to have to pick your material that you want to crystallize. And these are just dollar store silk flowers. So these were just tiny poinsettias. These are larger poinsettias. I've got some white, I got some red, and I was experimenting. But regardless of what you're using, you need to make sure that you've got a vessel. So you want to take those flowers. You want your vessel to be large enough where your flowers are going to be suspended in the solution. And this is actually a little bit tight. The flowers are submerged. You can see the flowers are down there, but they are floating. So I used different vessels. I used uh, some of these for the single long branches, but I also used just aluminum cooking trays because they gave me a greater surface. And the other thing is I did buy flowers that were flat. They're not really three dimensional. So it was easy to just let them soak and they actually floated on the surface. So you can see all the leaves are floating. So it makes it really super easy. Some other things that you're going to need, not necessary, but makes life easier, and that is a towel. So one tip is to get yourself a towel, especially if you're working on a very cold surface. The towel not only will insulate your project, which is supposed to help make the crystals larger, the slower that it cools down, but also this stuff gets all over the place. And if it gets onto your towel, it's no problem. You can just fold up your towel and throw it into the laundry. It's meant as a laundry booster in the first place. So the towel, some chopsticks, and just some string are helpful to suspend your project. So pick your vessels out in advance. So the measurements that I'm using is two cups of boiling water for every half cup of the borax detergent. And the reason that I'm using that, first of all, borax themselves has a, a YouTube website and they use three tablespoons of borax for every one cup of boiling water. So mine is just a little tiny bit more concentrated. Now you could add more borax or you could remove some of the borax. And what it's going to do is really, it's gonna dictate how thick those crystals get. 
So the more saturated your liquid is with the borax, if you add more than half a cup, then your flowers are going to become thicker and more encrusted. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to look prettier. I find that the, using the half cup, and I'll show you a bit of an example. I just find that using the half cup just gives you enough crystals to encrust your flower, but it leaves it super sparkly and you can still see the definition. So the thicker the crystals get, it still looks pretty, but you do lose some of that definition of the flower. So you've got your two cups of boiling water, a full half cup of your borax. You're gonna mix the two together and then you are going to stir this until the water becomes somewhat clear and you can feel that the borax has totally dissolved. So I've stirred it for about a minute and you can see most of that powder is dissolved. So you can see all the leaves are floating. So it's just enough water to float. And for this batch, I'm going to insulate it from the cold counter. So I'm just using a paper bag, but you could cover it with a piece of cardboard. And the thought is that the slower it cools down, the larger the crystals will form. So, so I just sat my whole project, like I said, on a towel, insulates it, and I just put a paper bag over it and I let it sit for 24 hours. Turned out really nice. And I'm just letting them dry on a paper towel. And the leaves, they only really crystallized on the tips. Perhaps it was, wasn't was uh, submerged far enough in to the water, but they look nice as well. Here is a little one, little flower. So at the end of the 24 hours, I was able to remove my flowers or leaves or whatever it is that I was doing. And I just laid, I just laid them all out on a piece of paper towel until they completely dried. Now I'll show you a couple of surprising things that I did try that worked really great. First of all, I tried the skin of a whole tangerine. I even stuffed it with some batting and removed the flesh and nothing adhered to it. Zero crystals. Then I took a little dried rose and as you can see, it crystallized some of those little leaves. but it removed all the color of the rose. I actually got more crystals on the string than on the plant matter itself. And then of course, these are the leaves which are smooth and they created a very, very fine crystal on them. And it might be because those leaves are a little bit more plasticized. These types of leaves you can see that only a few crystals adhere to it, but yet when I did the flower, but they really, really did adhere to the silk flower really, really well. You can see that. You can add a toothpick like that. If you are going to be creating uh, some sort of a centerpiece, so that's one way that you can secure them. And then I tried, I don't know if you can see. So I don't know if you recognize these, but they are my coffee filter carnations. 
and I wanted to try and see if the crystals secured to the coffee filter and they really secured exceptionally well. So I'm not saying go and make a whole bunch of coffee filter flowers and then crystallize them. Um, it's much easier just to crystallize silk flowers, but that is an option and it turned out really, really cute. Water is the enemy of these flowers, just like we dissolved the original borax in the hot water and then recreated those crystals. If you were to run this underwater, the crystals would dissolve. The other thing that's going to happen is over time, the crystals will lose their shine. They will start to become more and more opaque white. So one way to preserve them is just with a clear coat. So you can preserve it with uh, an acrylic or, or a polyurethane clear coat. But another word of advice, if you're going to use the clear coat, you want to do a very fast spritz. So a very light spray and let it drop on the flower. If you spray directly on the flower, it will saturate that um, fabric underneath the crystals and it dulls the effect of the crystals. So the finer the spray, the more of that glitter of the crystal is going to remain. The other, the other little tip that I wanted to share is once you've finished with your solution and you remove your project, and a lot of times the project may stick to the bottom or the sides, but I find that you can pry it or break it off gently with your chopstick and then gently remove the project. So what you're gonna be left with is a whole bunch of leftover water and then crystals all on the inside of your vessel. So what I did was I strained off the water into a pot. So I take the liquid, I strain it out, and then I'm left with all the crystals, which very easily break. I broke up all the crystals and then I boiled it again. So I'm reheating all that water with the crystals and I'm just going to melt it all the way through. You can see the water is quite clear. So once we've got all this melted, then we're going to add to this a little bit more of the fresh borax. So initially we used half a cup for two cups of boiling water, but since we already have some of the crystals in here, I'm going to use one third of a cup for every two cups of water. So you can see we've added the new borax and now we're just going to stir until it's all melted, but you can notice right away the water is cloudy so that you know that this water is now saturated with the borax. And this will be our new solution to start the process all over again. So just stir it for a good minute until it's really dissolved. Now that's just the way that I did it. You might have to add a little bit more or your flowers may become a little bit thicker. So the second batch that I did, where I added the quarter of a cup of fresh borax, my crystallized flowers did become slightly thicker and more crystallized, but I did insulate it the second time around. So I'm not sure which caused what, but it's just something that you're going to have to just test and play with. But remember, you want your solution to be fully dissolved so you can't feel the grit, but it's still cloudy. That means you've got that saturated borax right in there. So once I finished making all my flowers for this year, I then was left with a whole bunch of solution. So what I did was I strained off the water, I threw away the water, I broke up the crystals, and I just let it dry overnight. And as you can see, I've got all this crystallized borax. So now that it's dry full of crystals, I'm just gonna put it in a jar and I'm gonna store it until the next time I try this project again, just so that I'm not wasting all that borax. 
Now, I wouldn't use it in your laundry because especially if you're using colored um, silks, it will change the color of the water. So for instance, if you're using a red flower, it may change the water to red. So that's now you would you may not want to reuse this if you're using colored flowers and it dyes the water or turns the water a different color and maybe that's going to affect the next project or you can also add food coloring to these waters and your crystals will become the color of the food coloring that you're using so if you wanted blue crystallized flowers just add a couple of drops of your blue food coloring to your borax and water solution right and you'll get the crystals of the color of whatever the food coloring that you use. And you can use these flowers to create so many different beautiful centerpieces. Here are some ideas. So I've just taken my little glass and just filled it up with some fake moss. Then I've got my little greenery that I've stuck on a toothpick. I can stick it right in there to secure it. And then I've got my little flower that I've stuck on a toothpick. And that holds it quite securely in place. So it's great. Just added some garland to my buffet. And then I can have all the little individual crystallized flowers. Along the buffet. And you can enjoy each one individually. But you can also add it to the mantle. And then I've got my red poinsettia that I've just added a little bit of berries and I've got it sitting with my crepe paper amaryllis. So you can also use it to create something like this. And this is just a branch. This is just a branch from the garden. It is, I just grabbed a branch from outside. You want a vessel that is going to be heavy enough to support the weight of the branch. And the branch has to support the weight of the flowers because these flowers do have a little bit of weight to them since they are crystallized. And you want to be able to secure your branch first in your vessel, whether you use stones or um, foam, floral foam, etc. If you get a branch that's interesting and has these little uh, V's where they branch off into two, these little V sections actually help cradle the flower and keep it in place. So in order to make these, you're going to need a glue gun. You're going to need some tape, um, floral tape, and I've got brown floral tape. I've got a little bit gardening wire, but you could use a very thin gauged wire. It's got to be thin enough that you can manipulate it with your hands, but thick enough to support the flower. You're going to need a couple of needle nose pliers, and you're going to need your flowers that have already been dried and uh, perhaps you've already sprayed them to preserve them. So the first thing I did is with this garden wire, and you can see it's just a very flexible thin wire, but it, it holds. So you can see how thick the wire is and how bendable it is. So I took about 10 inches and then all I did was create a little coil so just with my needle nose pliers, but honestly, 
Um, this is soft enough. that I could coil this with my hands head, like that. And this is the part that we're gonna use to cup the flower. So the flower is going to sit on it like this. We're gonna be able to glue all these coils, glue the bottom of the flower, and then we're gonna be able to attach it and we're gonna be able to squeeze the coil in place. Coil around the branch. And then I just took some of the brown floral tape and just went around it. And you can see how you can manipulate that coil by just pulling it out and turning the direction, depending on how you want the flower to sit. So I want it to sit like this. That looks good. So I just folded up a little piece of parchment and then added glue. on those rings. I just put a piece of parchment so that I can grab it underneath without burning my hands. Glue to the back of the flower. And now with that parchment paper, I can just position my flower. I'm gonna put that little stem right in the hole. And pull it away before it's completely glued and hold it in place and you can see that's being held very securely so we're just attaching it from behind and you just want to hold it until that you got to hold it for a couple of seconds and then if there's any little stems or anything sticking out you can just snip it but you can see that leaf also hides the coil a little bit. I'll show you close up of the flowers. Nice, but again, remember, I think you can see the weight of the branches as they are moving. So there is a little bit of weight, so make sure that your vessel that you're using is very strong in order to support your branch and your flowers, but you can use them in individual little vases like this, or a tiny one for place settings, or a taller one in a champagne flute. And you can even crystallize your coffee filter carnations. They turned out great. And for this little guy, I'm still have to crystallize the flowers, but I was just, doing a design plus keep your old crystal borax for your next project so if you try this i hope you like it and if you like it i hope you share it and if you'd like to see more content i hope you subscribe until next time happy flower making borax crystal flowers that is enjoy